Batman, Wonder Woman, Superman, Cyborg, and The Flash join forces in the Justice League, there's a lot to take in on the big screen. With the Blu-ray and digital release, we can now sit back, enjoy the movie again, and spot everything we missed the first time around. See hidden characters, moments that were completely cut out, and homages to some DC Comics classics. Before you see the important things you missed, click subscribe! You'll join our notification squad to be the first to know of new Screen Rant content. All right, stop joking around, Luther. I'm gonna have to come in there. <laughs> Future DCEU villains. Steppenwolf and his army of parademons served as the main villains for Justice League, but the movie showcased a lot of potential hints of future villains in the DCEU. One of the more obvious reveals came from the post credit sequence where an escaped Lex Luthor meets up with Deathstroke on his private yacht. The two classic villains are poised for returns in Superman and Batman's solo films. Besides the great post credit scene, there are other signs of future villains. Steppenwolf may have represented the crazy world of Apocalypse, but the character pales in comparison to the true leader, Darkseid. Steppenwolf briefly mentions Darkseid, although we don't get a look at the character. The Flash mentions his ability to communicate with gorillas, a reference to the classic villain, Gorilla Groot, and a potential baddie for the Flash solo film. Look closely during some of the opening Gotham scenes and you can spot a neon sign reading Janus Cosmetics. The reference ties into the classic Batman villain, The Black Mask. There is a lot of excitement building towards the future of the DCEU and the filmmakers found plenty of ways to tease fans while building up potential plots for our favorite heroes. Do you feel a sense of confidence that we're not doing something horribly wrong and macabre here? Not really. A Visit to the Grave by now, we all know how the production of the Justice League was essentially two different movies. Zack Snyder started the production with a much darker vision and tone before he was replaced by Joss Whedon. A whole lot of the movie was left on the cutting room floor or completely reshot due to the major changes behind the camera. On screen, Superman's resurrection was shown with a quick shot of the Flash and Cyborg assigned the role of gravediggers, but the characters weren't the only ones at the scene. In a behind-the-scenes picture, revealed by Zack Snyder, Clark Kent's grave had a couple other visitors in the form of Wonder Woman and Aquaman. Did the characters overlook the digging? Did Aquaman use his trident to scoop up some dirt? Maybe Wonder Woman had to take out some of the Smallville Cemetery security guards while the others completed their criminal act. Or maybe they were all just there to see the legendary hero get dug up out of the grave once and for all. Either way, we may never get to see how the scene played out or how much more the scene extended beyond the final cut that we got to see. You can save the cow. You can save all of them. Superman's Black Suit With so many rumors about cut scenes and extended versions, fans were clamoring to see more on the official home release of Justice League. The end result was a whopping two, yes, just two, deleted scenes which offered little in the form of extra content or missing scenes. The first scene confirms a rumor that spread through the internet like wildfire during the Justice League production. For months, fans speculated Superman would be reborn in his black suit. The black suit is an homage to the classic DC storyline entitled Death of Superman. When Superman was reborn in the comics, he appeared in the black suit and also had new long locks. In Justice League, Clark Kent explores his Fortress of Solitude in an attempt to find the superhero costume he once wore. As various designs came out, one of them is the infamous black suit. Cavill teased the suit on social media during the production of the movie, but the final cut never showcased the design at all. Superman went with his classic suit for battle and transformed into the true hero he was born to be. Still, seeing the small glimpse of the suit was a great nod to the comic book fans and featured a quiet moment reminiscent of the Man of Steel film which came before. I've never stopped thinking about you. Iris West Car Crash we were introduced to a lot of new characters in Justice League. Each hero had their own little collection of characters, including Barry Allen's The Flash. Throughout Allen's cutscenes, we're able to see The Flash meet up with his father in jail, but we do not get to meet with very many other characters from his life. One of the key characters missing from the Justice League movie is Allen's love interest, Iris West. Actress Kiersey Clemens was hired for the role and presumably for a role in The Flash's eventual solo movie. 
A number of scenes were shot with Iris, but they were all cut by the time Joss Whedon took over the production. Some of the biggest scenes showcase the Flash making good use of his powers when Iris gets involved in a car crash. We see none of that in the movie, but Zack Snyder loves supplying fans with some goodies and did showcase a screenshot of Iris that he took while on set. If the Flash's solo movie ever gets off the ground, we'll see a lot more of Iris in the expanded world of Barry Allen. For now, there's plenty of Flash story to enjoy on the official television series. Yeah, and it's not like a competition, you know? Well, it, it is a competition, but, you know, it's not like a macho uh, measuring thing. But if I win, you're off the team. Comic book covers. Justice League and other films in the DCEU draw inspiration from a number of storylines on the pages of DC Comics. One of the more obvious examples comes from the official Justice League poster, which is stylized and designed based off the classic Alex Ross Justice League portrait. Dig a little further to find more references to other classic DC comic book covers. For example, a classic Superman cover features the Flash and Superman going head to head in a race. Their race was referenced directly in a post credit sequence. As the two heroes take off, many of the angles and shots look just like the comic book covers and panels they were inspired by. In one of the Justice League trailers, Batman stands on a gargoyle statue designed with a skull head. The visual was inspired by Detective Comics issue 682, and the shot was even angled in the same similar way. The dark and gritty tone captured the style of Batman perfectly, although the shot was never used in the final film production. The nods to the original comics were great for die-hard fans and provided fun visuals for casual viewers as well. I'm the idiot who left. But I'm back now, and I'm gonna make things right. Clark Kent's shirt. There's a great moment in Justice League when Superman is reborn and dons his classic red and blue costume. The classic hero's outfit is not the only signature piece of fashion the character wears in the film. Through the years, Clark Kent has always showcased his dedication to his hometown of Smallville and the farm life he grew up in. In the original Superman movie and through television shows like Smallville, Kent has always been known for wearing red plaid button-down shirts. As Kent visits the cornfields of his farm and reunites with Lois Lane, we get to see him don the signature look one more time. Wearing a classic red and black plaid shirt, the design truly transformed the character into the Clark Kent we've known over the years. The visual and style is a dedication to all the Superman characters and was the perfect way to transition Kent back into his good guy form and away from his confused zombie-like state after be awoken from death. He may have forgotten who he was for a bit, but his sense of farm boy fashion never truly went away. And no matter what year it is, the classic plaid button-down never seems outdated. Icebergs in the harbor. Four months since the last ship got through. Well, this stranger doesn't come by ship. Aquaman goes for a ride. Aquaman may have a solo movie coming out at the end of 2018, but he could have had a chance to shine a lot more in Justice League. The carefree hipster attitude of the Sea King probably didn't come off the way he was supposed to in Justice League because of all the cuts that were made. We spend very little time in Atlantis and only get a few scenes of the Icelandic village Aquaman spends his land time at. There was a lot of other footage shot and many scenes were cut, including Willem Dafoe's character known as Nuitas Volko. While no deleted scenes were released to showcase the cut footage, Zack Snyder did give a glimpse of other scenes Aquaman was filmed in. One of the scenes showcased Aquaman riding in the back of a truck. We assume the scene took place in the village he called home, but do not have any other details about it. We were only left a sea-dwelling rock star who was stuck with many one-liners about Bruce Wayne dressing up as a bat. The character had a lot more potential, and we missed all of it. Luckily, we will get to see non-stop Aquaman action with the release of his solo movie. How many of you are there? Not enough. Detective Crispus Allen. Building up the DCEU requires a lot of characters, locations, and planning along the way. One of the bigger casting decisions of the movie was J.K. Simmons as Commissioner Gordon. He was in the film for less than 10 minutes, but establishing the character was a critical point for building Batman's world and setting up an eventual solo film. Along with Gordon, some other signature Gotham City characters were quickly introduced, including Detective Crispus Allen. During a scene in the Gotham City Police Department, Crispus briefly approaches Commissioner Gordon to discuss a case. Hopefully, the scene sets the seeds for Allen's bigger role in the DCEU down the line. 
In the comics, the detective interacts with Batman on numerous occasions, and even has an extended story arc of his own. At one point, the character's body becomes overtaken by the legendary hero known as the Spectre. The Spectre is known as the Spirit of Vengeance, and would be an interesting path to take for future DC movies like Justice League Dark. The character was barely on screen, but showcases a lot of different directions the story can go in the future. If the character does return, he will likely appear in the solo Batman movie. Master Kent, he said you'd come. Now let's hope you're not too late. Superman meets Alfred. A lot of the Justice League is built around the death and rebirth of Superman. We see the world mourn the hero with black Superman banners and visit his grave multiple times. Unfortunately, the filmmakers decide to cut a lot of the scenes where the hero is reborn again. Before joining the climactic battle against Steppenwolf, Superman has an encounter with Alfred which has been cut from the movie entirely. The infamous line from the deleted scene showcases Alfred explaining to Superman, He said you'd come, now let's hope you're not too late. When the line was originally released in the trailer, his words drew a ton of speculation about what hero he was talking to, and if the hero was actually Superman or someone else like the Green Lantern. Thanks to the second release deleted scene, we can end all of the speculation and reveal the person was indeed Superman. The scene is short, but would have been another nice touch added to the movie. Instead, the scene only adds to the plethora of trailer footage which never made it into the final cut of the film. There is bound to be a lot more footage of Superman that we have yet to see. Hopefully with some mustache action. After the unity, you will join my legion and you will know the righteousness of power. The Ancient Battle Scene In the beginning of Justice League, as we learn about the origins of the Mother Boxes, we are treated to visual treat to help cover up so much exposition. The Ancient Battle Scene showcases Steppenwolf with his army of parademons taking on all types of warriors. With quick cuts and a massive collection of CG effects, it's easy to miss some of the smaller details. Watch closely to see a version of the Green Lantern. When the ring bearer gets killed, the ring flies through the air and goes on the journey to find a new owner. A small moment is an ideal way to set up the Green Lantern core film planned for the future. Look even further in the detailed background to see the collection of gods also fighting Steppenwolf. One of the gods is hard to make out, but many fans have stated he is actually Zeus. Zeus helps battle Steppenwolf and protect Earth from becoming a new version of the planet Apocalypse. The battle scene was quick, but filled with a ton of different details to keep fans entertained. Who knows what kind of extended footage is available to showcase more of the battle and characters who were involved with defeating Steppenwolf for the very first time. These heroes were here the whole time to remind us that hope is real. Wow, there you have it. What facts surprised you the most? What else did we miss? Did you enjoy Justice League? Let us know in the comments section below. Don't forget to like this video, share it, and subscribe to Screen Rant on YouTube so you can stay up to date with our awesome videos. Have a good one.